Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So in this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can control our light with hand detection. So we're going to use media pipe to detect the hands. We're going to detect all the features that we have in the hands. So the fingertip and all the different kind of like key points that we have. Then we're going to use that to actually control the lights with other Philips Hue. So in the last video, we controlled our light based on the persons that were moving in the room. So if we're detecting a person in the room, we will turn on the light. And if there's no person in the room, we'll just turn off the light and then again we can control our own smart home with the yellow v8 model in this video here we're basically just going to control the light intensity by just adjusting it with our hands so this is actually like really nice so again if you want to have your uh, light you want to adjust it on the go you can basically just have a camera running with the application in the background and then again if you detect your hand and then if you just do this with your fingers take them out of the image and then you have actually changed the intensity of your light sources so let's now jump straight into visual studio code and see how we can set it up so first of all we need to import like philips hue bridge we're going to connect to the ip address you can just go into your philips hue app into the settings and then you can get the ip address of your bridge then we're basically just going to connect to that i'm um, going over that in the previous video as well where we control our smart home with the new yola v8 model we also need OpenCV to actually read in the images from our webcam. We're going to use media pipe to do the hand detection. So we're basically going to track our hand around. And as you're going to see, we're actually getting to going to get some really awesome results. And this can even run on a CPU. So you can try this out on your own laptop. We're going to import time so we can calculate the number of frames per second that we get. So first of all, here we just set up our bridge. We set up our drawing utilities and also our hand detection from media pipe. So this is the way that we're doing that. I also have another video where we go over like all the details about media pipe, how we can set up this hand detector uh, line by line. So in this video, we're going to create a project around that. We're going to control the light uh, with my finger. So with my index finger and my thumb, we're basically going to control the light intensity based on the distance between those two fingers. So first of all here, we're basically just going to set the index here of our fingertip, um, index fingertip here equal to zero and also the thumb tip. Then we're going to get the coordinates of those in our image frame. And then we can calculate the distance between our the two fingertips. Then we have the distance variable. We're basically just going to pass the distance variable as the light intensity. So we have values between zero and 255. Uh, and then we're going to control the, the light intensity based on the distance between the two fingers. We're going to set up a video capture with OpenCV. So we're just going to open up a webcam. Then we can go in and read frames from our webcam. First of all, we need to set up with MP underscore hand. So this is the machine learning solution from MediaPipe for the hand detection. We can set up some different parameters for the minimum detection confidence. So if the confidence score is above 0.5, we actually like detect it as a hand. We also have a minimum tracking confidence. So not only are we doing detections of the hand, but we're also doing tracking of the hand in the axe like frame. So this is actually like really nice really easy to use you just do this and then you have the hand detector and you can use all the different kind of like outputs from the model and then we will just have our while loop here running as long as our webcam is open if we hit q on a keyboard we will terminate the program and just release our webcam and destroy all the windows as in all the other project application that we're using opencv2 uh, so first of all we're just reading an image from our uh, webcam we have cap.read we store it in the image variable we start the timer so we can time how long it actually like, takes to detect our hand in the frame we need the image height and also the image width to do the calculations because uh, the values that we get back from the hand detector will actually like, be uh, normalized so we need to convert them back rescale them back to our original frame size and then we can use those results to control our light intensity first of all we need to convert our color from bgr to rgb because when we load in our images with OpenCV, they load in in the PGR format, but the models from MediaPipe, they have been trained on RGB images. So that is why we need to convert our images uh, from PGR to RGB to start with. Then we can actually go down and set the image here to writable, and we're going to set that equal to false. And the reason for that is that we can actually like improve the performance because we don't want to write anything from our image. We just want to read it, do detections. So we can actually like just set this equal to false, which means that we pass in our image as a reference to the model and that will make it uh, way faster. And then we will also improve the performance. 
Now we can actually just do a forward pass in our model. We process and we process the image and find all the hands that we want to detect. We just have this hand hand detector we call dot process. We throw in the image through the model and then we'll get the results out in this variable. We set the writable, writable here flag for the image equals true again. So we can actually like go in and use the image. We need to convert it back from RGB to BGR so we can display things in our OMCV window. Now we can go down and actually like use um, use these results from our hand detector. So first of all, here we just have an if statement. So if we're actually detecting any landmarks in the hand, so if we have detected a hand, we go down, run through all the hands that we have detected in the frame. So first of all, here we just have the results, multi-hand landmarks. We just have a follow loop here. So we have a hand landmark. So this is for all the hands that we're detecting in the frame. So if you only have one hand, it will only run through this for loop uh, once. And then we can go down and just index the different kind of like fingers that we want to control our smart home with. You can basically just go inside media pipes um, documentation. I'll just drag it over here from the left and then we can take a look at that. So here we basically just have the media pipe documentation. We go inside the um, solutions. Then we can go up to the hand detections. So we have hands, media pipe. If we just scroll down, we will actually be able to see the key points. So this is the key points that we're going to use, but we can just directly go in and index them with attributes. Let's just go back to Visual Studio Code again. Then we can see we have this index fingertip. We set that equal to hand landmarks. We can access the attribute or the specific landmark by calling dot landmark. And then inside the MP hands, we have this hand landmark. And then we want to get the index fingertip. So we're going to want to get the pixel coordinate of our index fingertips and we also want to do it for the thumb tip because then we can use those two points to calculate the distance between them but again we have these scale or normalized values we get back from the object detector or the hand detector model we need to rescale them back again so first of all we're just going to multiply the x and the y coordinate with the image width and also the image height we're going to do that thing with both the, the index fingertip and also the thumb then we can go in and calculate the distance between two, two points. It is basically just taking the x coordinate of the, the first tip and minus the, the x coordinate of the second tip. Then we're going to square that and then we're going to plus that uh, with the y values. And then we're going to take the power of 0.0 to these values, which is equal to taking the square root. So this is basically just how to calculate the distance. Square root, the two points, the x values and the y values, those should be squared. So the difference between those two should be squared. And then we take the square root of that. And then we get the Euclidean distance uh, that we can then use to control our lights. Then we're just going to use these draw landmarks so we can draw the actual like landmarks that we detect. Then we're going to use Philips Hue, the framework from Philips Hue. We have the, our bridge. We just call dot set light, and this is just the name of my lamp or my light source from Philips Hue. Then we have this bright, which is for brightness, and then we just take the integer of our distance between our two landmarks. So again, we have these two landmarks. We calculate the distance to it, and then we just set the light intensity uh, directly equal to that. We end the timer. We calculate the number of frames per second. Uh, we draw a line between our two. Um, fingers or the two points that we want to calculate the distance to. So the length of the line would act like be the same as the light intensity for our light sources. We put out the number of frames per second in our frame and then we're just going to visualize our results with OMCV. If we hit Q on a keyboard at any time, we're just going to uh, release our webcam and then we terminate the program. So when you're not ready to run the program, all the code will be available on my GitHub. You can just go down in the description, go to my GitHub link and then you can find the code in there. We're just going to run the program and again this can act like run on the cpu now we get the detections up we can see that we act like have these images in full hd so if i just take my hand up we can see that we're now detecting my hands i can also take my other hand up here but again we're only going to control the first hand that we detect in the image frame and again if i move my hand around we can see that this is acting like a really nice hand detector even though i'm rotating it and we can use this for a lot of different kind of things we're going to create some other applications around this because this can actually be used full in a lot of different ways we can also go in and create like a coordinate system like a 3d coordinate system so we can see like how the, the hand rotates we can go in do some post estimation you can just imagine like a robot uh, robot arm or like a robot hand let's say that we just have like motors in all of our key points then we can actually like go in and control a robot hand with these um, detected hand coordinates or like the features that we're detecting in the hand because again we can see that this is act like really uh, really awesome detections. Even though like some of the fingers are actually included, they're still able to detect them like fairly good. 
So let's now see how it actually works right now. I'm just controlling my lights up there. I'm just going to turn the camera so you guys can see what's going on. But again, the idea is that we want to control the light based on the distance between those two fingers. I'm just going to move the camera over here so you guys can see uh, what is actually going on up in the roof. So here we have the the light source that we're going to control, you can control an arbitrary number of light sources that you have in your home. You can also go in and control specific ones. Here, I'm just going to take my fingers up so you guys can actually see what's going on. So now we have full brightness on my light source in the roof here. Um, and then we can basically just turn down the light intensity. So here we can see we're probably like at half light intensity. So this is 128. If we just take the cl fingers closer, we can see that the light intensity acts like decreases. Here, I'm just going to shut off the light by taking the two index fingers here, um, pretty much like just as close as possible. And then we can just play around with it. You can see that it acts like increases and decreases the light intensity uh, pretty nicely. So this can be used for a lot of different kind of things. This is actually like pretty cool. Uh, you can play around with it on your own side. We're going to create an application where we're going to use the waste light sources as well. Um, if you don't have any Philips Hue, but this can be a lot, a lot of different kind of things. You can also control the volume on your PC, for example, or some other different kind of like applications. Also, maybe uh, control your your speakers or whatever you guys can come up with. If you have some cool applications, also throw them in the comments. We can take a look at it. I'll try to like set them up. We can create some videos and cool projects around that if you have some really nice applications. So that's it for this video here, guys. We've been over how we can actually like set up this Philips Hue bridge in Python, how we can set up this hand detector, and we get some really awesome results by this hand detector. We can use it for specific applications. We can control light sources as I did in this video. I also have some other videos where we control my, my lights in the living room based on some optic detections with the Yolvi 8 model. We're going to create a tons of projects, some real life projects with AI, computer vision, and all those different kind of things because this is actually like really nice that we can use these uh, models, computer vision, and basically just take what we learn what we act like code and take them out in the real life and use it for something so this is really cool so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to the subscribe button and bell notification under the video also like this content if you want more in the future it just really helps me and youtube channel out in a massive way so i have these computer vision tutorials deep learning tutorials where we go over like all the basics uh, basic techniques how we can get started, how we can use these different things for real-time applications. Now we're kind of combining all of them. So if you're interested in one of those tutorials, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll see you next week, guys. Bye for now.